Next up, uh, we're going to perform an operation on this thing. So we've, we've deconstructed the geometry. We're going to transform it now and reconstruct it into something else in a way. Um, we're kind of going to do transform and reconstruction all at the same time. Um, so what we're going to do is start to look at the transform panel. Under uh, transform, we're going to go under Euclidean, and we're going to select move. And then drop it over here to the right. Okay, Kind of give yourself some, some distance. So uh, this is sort of how I want you to practice learning in Grasshopper. Okay, And I'm going to walk you through this process with me here. Um, you, you generally want to find the tool that you want to use, and then you can, I, I have already said this before a number of times, you can sort of work backwards from it to figure out what information I need to feed it for it to work. Does that make sense? And then you fill in the gap in between. Okay, So that's what we're going to do together. Um, so the move command says that it's going to translate or move an object along a vector. So I've sort of already gotten you to that point where I've given you how to get vectors. Um, and the correct ones, but uh, it's going to ask you for the base geometry that we're going to move, and then it's going to ask you for the translation vector. Now, what do you think you're going to do with this? Uh huh. And then, what are we going to plug into vector? Let's give it a shot. So we have our, well, we could plug in our sphere, or we could plug in the subdivided surfaces of our sphere. What are we going to do? This. Two against one. We're going with subdivided surfaces. So we're going to plug that into geometry, and it did that. Why did it do that? It is not because it's stupid. It is because we didn't tell it what to do. Um, so it's giving us a default translation vector which says 0, 0, 10, which means the default translation vector is 10 units in the z-axis. Um, we have to redefine that, and we've already kind of as a group, um, by omission more than uh, consensus, decided that we're going to plug in these vectors. So I'm going to plug in these vectors, and it does that. Pretty cool stuff, right? Where'd you get that move from? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, this is from uh, Transform Euclidean. Okay, so I'm going to kind of reorient some of these so it's a little more clear. I'm also going to turn this off, and I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, so um, what I want to describe to you, I guess, is um, what's happening and, and why we don't have control over this. Um, so basically, the translation vector gave us direction, but there was a default magnitude. So regardless of what the original size of that sphere was, let's go here, if I decrease that uh, sphere size, it's going to have a particular magnitude that it's being increased relative to the size of the sphere. But it doesn't let us define how far we want it to go from a static sphere. So what we have to do is insert something else. Um, under uh, under vec uh, yeah, vector, yeah, vector, and under vector, so vector, vector again, um, we're going to pull in what's called amplitude. So this says, um, the description says, set the amplitude or length of a vector. So basically what it's going to ask you for is the base vector, right? So that's like this guy. And then it's going to ask you for, under A, a numerical amplitude. So we can change this to go from here to there instead. Does that make sense? Um, so let's do that. Let's drop these vectors in. 
and uh, let's create a new amplitude, 0 to 25. And it's the vector x, y, z that we're getting? Or uh, from the vector? Uh, we are going into vector, vector, and we're using amplitude. Amplitude. Yeah. Right I'll put that here. Vector, vector. Um, so then now we have uh, new values that are all saying zero. And as we increase this, it's going to say something else. Um, but the important part is when we plug that into T, which overrides the vector for transforming, it's then going to change that value. So now rather than being relative to the size of the base sphere, we can increase where these are regardless of the sphere size. Does that make sense? So all we've done, all we've done is add transform and amplitude. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a moment to catch up and uh, we'll take a little break with this and then we're going to start looking at like how to use different amplitudes and different numbers and all kinds of cool crazy stuff. Did you add a value to the amplitude for the, for the spider? Yes, that's what this is. Yeah, but what, what was the value you added to it? It's, oh, uh, it's a slider from 0 to 25. Yeah. Mine, mine only goes up to, yeah, to 0 to 20. It, yeah, if you create one using that, it'll default from 0 to 120. Okay. Um, but delete that for a moment. Oh, I'm still recording. Whoops. <laughs>